Hello everyone, Treeks here, and welcome back to the next adventure of Simon Belmont, and therefore saying Castlevania, in this case Castlevania 4, which is officially called Super Castlevania 4, <laughs> but still, it's the fourth Castlevania game, not including the Game Boy games, the first one I ever played, and the one that introduced me to this series. Last time we started this adventure, making our way to Dracula's castle once again, and we stopped at the woods. In the middle of stage 2. As you can see we now have a river section. And the flow of the river actually forces us to the right. Or to the left. <laughs> because it can actually change around as you can see. And while being crouched we can't even move forward anymore. That's pretty much the strength of the flow you might say. Screwing up your controls majorly. And it seems to be changing up every 15 seconds or so. Let's actually set the pattern to that. Gargoyle? Apparently not an issue. <laughs> they look intimidating, but they die in one hit. <laughs> yeah, it's around 15 seconds on the timer, it looks like. And going downward against the flows looks like something that should not be easy. <laughs> Simon must have strong legs. <laughs> Changes up again. Be careful for spike bits in the floor. The water obscures it a little bit, but they are definitely still insta-kill. You, skeleton statues. Everybody's favorite foe ever since the very first game. <laughs> oh, grabby hands. Also infinitely spawning enemies, by the way. And this does go down pretty far. I wonder where we're going. Going deep, deep underground. Still nothing really too challenging. Just some enemies on occasion. And the occasional spike pit. But all of all, they never really make it too hard, despite the water flow. And this stream, bringing us underground, leads us to the caves of stage 3. But we're also moving upward again into some ancient ruins, it looks like. Welcome to the caves. Luckily, unlike in Castlevania 3, there's no poison leaking from the ceiling this time around. <laughs> it's just water drops. Don't have to fear those. But in Castlevania 3, we were much later in the game, of course, the moment they actually started introducing that stuff. Stage 3 is a little bit too early for stuff like that. So, as you can see, the water is safe to actually stand under. <laughs> Nothing poisonous or hazardous about it. Ooh, these guys are interesting. Rock monsters. If you slash them, they actually uh, become smaller, as you can see. <laughs> Very satisfying feeling, actually, killing these guys. <laughs> but let's go see what more is waiting for us here in the caves. More of these skeleton statues. I really like using them in every single Castlevania game so far. <laughs> Definitely one of Konami's favorite foes to use. And as you may expect, here's another one. <laughs> Ooh, we're entering a screen scroll area, it looks like. This cave is turning into something explorable, almost. <laughs> here's an axe. Perhaps even handier to have at a vertical oriented section like this. Ooh, this looks like a secret. This wall looks like something that is definitely breakable. And it is. And the ultimate secret is way too many candles. <laughs> Point bags, hearts, sub weapons. It is all here. And even some meat to heal yourself. And that is where it ends. There's a couple of these um, quote unquote bonus rooms in this game. This is the closest thing Castlevania can have towards a bonus room. <laughs> it never really has bonus areas. But it can have hidden alcoves like this. Functioning as the bonus rooms of this game, you might say. I'm pretty sure there's only three or four of them in the entire game. And I'm not too sure if I'm able to actually find all of them, but uh, at least this one I know. <laughs> this one is not that hard to find. Let's just continue to the right. Bam. <laughs> Killing these guys without waiting for the fire effects of the previous one to go out makes the screen a little bit full 
And the slowdown is nothing but an hell yeah. <laughs> I always like triggering the slowdown. <laughs> SNES or not. Even that can't handle all of the sprite work present on screen. <laughs> Definitely also one of my favorite activities to play around in in any game, if possible. And ouch, by the way. Stupid stalactites. <laughs> or is it stalactites? I always mix the two up, and I think everybody does. <laughs> but anyway, it's pretty obvious they fall, and, uh, and you need to stay clear of the debris as well. And after a long trek, that is finally the end of stage 3-1. And we move on to the waterfall section we saw on the overworld map. Stage 3-2. Oh, and this stuff falls. Took a while for it to do it, but still. <laughs> Eventually, that bridge will collapse. That is obvious. Don't have to bother with these things. They are indestructible. At least as far as I know. And now we get to a climbing section. Because this is pretty obvious. A vertical-oriented stage. Going upward. We are very far on the ground. And we need to make our way back to the ground level. You can just look at the first three games, and this one as well. Transylvania is not an easy place to actually traverse. <laughs> Getting to the castle is an adventure in itself. Ninety-nine hearts, and therefore saying maxed those out. It's interesting when that happens. It's not something you see a whole lot. Usually Castlevania games don't give you that many hearts, but apparently in this case that does happen. And especially in my case, because I never use my sub weapon. <laughs> I like to whip way too much for that. <laughs> it would have been nice if you actually uh, got one-ups for the fact for overflowing your heart count, but nothing actually happens. As you can see, if I grab additional hearts, I don't even get extra score. Nothing just happens. There should have been a mechanic that whenever you um, overflow your heart count, you return to zero but get an extra life. Or it should be added to your score. Still actually um, give the player a reason to still collect hearts, even though you can't carry them anymore. That is a missed opportunity, unfortunately. Let's go see what you have. This one is a little bit out of the way. Stopwatch. Okay. Might be able to use it. I have the hearts for it, after all, so... <laughs> I clearly do. Stage 3-3. Three, three. We're entering the ruins now. We're back in Atlantis. <laughs> and of course, because of the water here, the fishmen also appear again. Always present. Whenever there's a little bit of water at the lower side of the screen, the fishmen are always here. Oh, and I think this place actually lost its stability over the years. <laughs> Stuff falling from the ceilings. And it's also pretty obvious these lighter colored blocks crumble the moment you step on them. Oh, you're also here. <laughs> All these returning enemies, man. Gotta love them. Oh, speaking of returning enemies, look what we have here. <laughs> One of my favorite foes to mess around with. And especially in this game, because tickle, tickle, tickle. <laughs> oh, why is that move so fun to use? <laughs> if only that move was already in Castlevania 3. Because then, that game would be the best game ever made. <laughs> Tickle, tickle. <laughs> and it's not just fun to use, because as you can see, if you actually perform it correctly, you can also stun lock enemies that way. Even though it does a little bit less damage than a normal whip slash, the fact that you actually constantly hit the enemy also makes sure the enemy does not get a chance to attack himself. So yeah, uh, the tickle move is still very practical. <laughs> oh, and it looks like these guys also learned a new move. <laughs> they can squirt water at us now. And yes, that can push you into the water. And unlike swamp water, this normal water, Simon definitely can swim in, so you don't want to get knocked into this. Just be careful where these guys appear. You should be able to avoid them. Let's move up again. That's where the screen ends. 
but not per se the stage. Oh, I see you over there on that wall. <laughs> Something's trying to sneak up on us. <laughs> I'm not going to let that happen. It's pretty obvious if you actually get close to these guys. They will pop out of the wall and try to hit you. Pretty predictable. Let's let you throw first. Thank you. Ooh, I see uh, Screen Nuke. <laughs> bone flying party. Hell yeah. <laughs> Always love the bones flying around the moment you kill Skelly Guy. Let's tickle the grappling point. <laughs> Ooh, awesome. <laughs> Simon is like, words to the player. I'm getting wet here. <laughs> oh, oops. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Now I'm just messing around a little bit too much. <laughs> I have way too much fun with this game. <laughs> and I'm still not done with that, because Screen Nuke! <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Epic pose afterwards. <laughs> oh, why is this game so fun? It shouldn't be, but it is. <laughs> Gotta love them Castlevania games. What do we have here? Crumbling blocks, I see. So, the moment you actually fail this, you're forced to kill yourself. Because there's no way to retry, as you can see. Be careful. Let's move on to the vertical screen of stage 3-3. Three, three. There's another dragon head we can tickle. <laughs> Doing it from below here is a little bit harder. Whenever waving around your whip, it's actually easier to do it when facing in front of you. Doing it above you is a little bit harder to actually aim, as you can see. But this way it's definitely easier. It's better to orient your whip left or right, other than up or down. And it actually becomes a lot less effective. But here we can try to do it sideways. That way it should work. Yeah, this works pretty fine. Not really able to stun lock this guy. Oh, let's not grab the grapple point. <laughs> no. <laughs> Whee! <laughs> coochie, coochie, coo. <laughs> Come on. Ooh, hearts galore. <laughs> Immediate 38 hearts. I really love the fact that Castlevania is supposed to be a semi-horror game. And I'm turning it into a clown game. What the hell am I doing? <laughs> oh, waterfall just turned on. As if Simon wasn't wet enough already. <laughs> oh, meat. Thank you. Let's see if this works. Yeah, you I can reach. Going higher and higher. Actually leaving behind the water, it seems. Because where we are right now, it looks like a lot drier than we were just a moment ago. Oh, uh, correction on that. The water is back. <laughs> and that is because... You've guessed it. It's boss time. Dueling dragon heads. Looks familiar, right? Returning boss. Only this time they are oriented at the left side of the screen. It's going to make it hell making a thumbnail out of these guys. <laughs> Since I always have the game title and the episode number on the left side as well. <laughs> so perhaps I'll go for something different. At least the boss fight itself uh, speaks for itself. They will actually try to burn us with their uh, purple fire or blue fire. <laughs> Not really the way fire is supposed to look, but in a fantasy game we can forgive that. <laughs> and other than that, they move around their heads, so we just need to make sure we hit them in any way we can. Oh, here's number one. And the second one is one hit after it. And that was stage three. Do -do 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 -do. Also really love the ending of stage music in this game. Feels really epic. <laughs> but okay, uh, let's try to get serious again. Even though I'm having a hard time to do it in this game. <laughs> we're moving on to stage 4. Super Castlevania 4, stage 4. And we're only at part 2, unfortunately. <laughs> the first sight of a castle in this game, you might say. Not quite Dracula's castle yet. Go away, you! Stop living in the wall. <laughs> yeah, this is a little bit of a um, smaller castle. A watch-out tower, you might say, on the overworld map. 
but already in a castle setting like it's supposed to be. The game is called Castlevania after all, so <laughs> we want to be adventuring in a Romanian medieval castle. Oh, more people living in the wall. <laughs> more people living behind the wall. I see you. Not too sure how you're supposed to reach me because you're a club using enemy. And therefore, that is a pretty weird place to actually uh, place that enemy. <laughs> but still, Konami apparently thought that, that was a good idea. Let's go see what we can find up here. Probably more people living in the wall. Yeah, kind of remember there was one there as well. <laughs> well Skelly Mans also hang from the ceiling now. Oh, this looks uh, interesting. Forcing us to jump on the flipping platforms. And therefore saying, get off them immediately. Tricky platforming. You can already start to notice the platforming difficulty is getting cranked up a little bit already here in stage 4. And we need to go up, it seems. Because this is a dead end. Oh, speaking of dead. <laughs> Almost me. Still 4-1. Which is unfortunate, because remember, checkpoints actually function per stage. Oh, help. <laughs> and therefore saying, if I actually die here, I don't reappear at this screen, but wherever 4-1 began. And therefore saying, at the beginning of the entire stage in this case. Aha! Let's go see what you're hiding here. Nothing, really. Um... Yeah, um... <laughs> yeah, I don't think he can get out of there. <laughs> oh, never mind the checkpoint remark. Apparently you begin here. Interesting. Bad game design, Konami. If you make an alcove like that, make sure there's something in it. I'm probably not the first player to actually go in there. <laughs> and find there's nothing there. Strange that I did not remember that. I really think I should have. Boss time, it seems. Yeah, boss time. Ooh, a big skull. Oh, and it has a tongue. <laughs> Apparently this guy is not just skeleton. There's still one organ left in him, it seems. <laughs> but be careful, as you can see, the moment you hit him, stuff will start flying, and that can indeed hurt you. Be careful for the debris here. Oh, and you can burn the background even. I'm sure there's not a real effect in that, but still, it looks awesome. <laughs> Oh, and he did not really have a whole lot of health. He died pretty quickly. But he was not the final boss of the stage after all, so... He was only a mid-boss. Seems to be a dungeon-like area. Uh, sir? Are you alright? Oh, what the hell? <laughs> the stage starts turning! <laughs> Konami discovered another thing that can play around with on the SNES, it looks like. <laughs> The room is turning completely. 90 degrees in this case. You're supposed to wait until the stage actually turns again. But when I was younger I actually thought there was something here. Because it does look like <laughs> an area where you could go into. But trust me, you cannot. There's only death waiting for you there. But it is kind of confusing looking at uh, that area over there. I'm not sure what it's supposed to be. Because it does appear to be an opening. If you look at it closely, you will see there's actually nothing behind it, so you don't actually have to go in there. There's nothing there. But I spent like hours when I was younger trying to get in there because I was convinced it looks like an opening. There is something there. There's a secret room in there or something. <laughs> but as far as I know, after all of these years, there is indeed not. What you're supposed to do here is wait, try to survive these Medusa heads. With your level 1 whip. <laughs> and then eventually the room will turn again, as you can see. Just swing around. Wait until the room is completely turned. Upside down compared to how we began. Wait, because the platforms will start forming. You don't have to jump that far. <laughs> the game will make sure you have to jump a little bit less far. There we are. Complicated room, but we survived. One of the amazing things on the SNES Konami was able to play around on. And in fact, the next room is also going to be one. Because we're still not done with turning rooms yet. <laughs> this one also does. 
But here only the background does, but it does look amazing. Just look at this effect in the background. Oh, if only I was able to actually make moving thumbnails for the videos. This would be awesome. <laughs> oh, invisibility. Pretty sure I did not talk about that yet. But every time you find these jars, you will actually be invincible for a short amount of time. Very short amount of time. <laughs> but still. It is short invincibility. Besides the spinning background, it actually looks like to be a stage where you need to be running around fast. Because of the platforms behind us actually crumbling. But as you can see, it technically does not. Because the moment we stop moving, it also stops falling. So the room is not speedrun, even though it looks like one. Next room. More things moving around, only this time it's just platforms. Something a little bit more traditional, you might say. <laughs> Be careful not to get squished, obviously. You can get stuck between these moving platforms and the ceiling. I don't think there's anything on the lower path, so allow me to ignore. This moves up even further, but I'm pretty sure there's nothing there. Just a death squish. <laughs> Let's just move on. Also a location I've been exploring when I was younger, and I'm pretty sure there's nothing there as well. And here we need to keep on running, because this moves up pretty fast, as you can see. As far as Simon can run, because there's still no dash button in the Castlevania game. <laughs> Not at these early ones, at least. Not saying too much about later ones. <laughs> Let's save up on that spoiler alert. For people who are not familiar with later Castlevania games. Nothing in the wall. So let's move out of here. For all that, there's one more boss we need to take care of. Probably going to be the final thing we're going to do today, looking at the time. The boss of stage 4. Requires black background, apparently. <laughs> Ooh, Stone Man. Revenge of the Rocky guys from stage 2, it looks like. <laughs> he works in a similar deal. The more we hit him, the smaller he becomes. And the biggest threat is the fact that the uh, rocks also come dropping from the ceiling, as you can see. Now, those are actually pretty difficult to see coming. And therefore, that is uh, by far the most difficult attack this guy has. Other than that, it's pretty easy to avoid him. He never goes all the way to the edge of the screen, and therefore, that is always a safe haven for you. All of all, not a hard boss. He just has a hard body. <laughs> Let's finish today. Still alive, barely, but still. We get full health after the stage, like always. And it looks like next weekend is going to start with stage 5. Which is going to be... Our final journey towards Castlevania. Ooh. One more stage in Transylvania before we reach the castle. But for that, we are going to continue next time. Starting a new episode in a new stage. The way it should be. <laughs> Thank you for watching, and see you folks next time. Treeks out!